Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today I wanted to make a quick video on the different variant engines that would show up on the New Edge Mustangs, which would be 1999 through 2004. Late Model Restoration did a really cool video on this, but I just wanted to expound on it a little bit in a little bit more detail. Simply put, the V6 Mustangs had a pushrod engine, which was a 3.8 liter, or in 2004, only a 3.9 liter. And so it had a single cam that goes down the middle of the block, where the GT and the Cobra had the overhead cam engines from 99 to 04. So you had a, either a single overhead cam, which meant you had one camshaft on each side of the engine, on each cylinder head, which was uh, on top, or you had the dual overhead cam for the Cobra. So some confusion does come into play because GT owners say, well, I have two total camshafts, one on each cylinder head. Does that mean I have a dual overhead cam? And the answer is no, they're talking about per cylinder head. So you've probably heard other manufacturers call their four valve motors a quad cam, which is probably a little more correct in the way that you're saying it. So Cobras and Mach 1s do have a quad cam setup, which is two camshafts per cylinder head. Sounds amazing. And then at idle, the four valves have a really nice burble. So starting with the V6 engines, they're the only Mustangs where they were left behind. They didn't get an overhead cam layout. They still are a pushrod engine, which means they have one camshaft going down with pushrods that come up and open and close the valves. So in 1999 through 2003, this 3.8 liter was rated at 190 horsepower and 220 pound-feet of torque. They did make a slight change in 2004. Uh, they went to a 3.9 liter, so 0.1 liter more, and they rated it at 193 horsepower with the same torque, 220 foot-pounds. And my understanding to that was that they were running low on inventory for the last year, and I think they even went more towards the uh, Ford Ranger or some of the other 3.940 engines uh, to finish off that body style. As for the Mustang GT, it got the 4.6 liter two valve engine, which was rated at 260 horsepower and 302 pound feet of torque. And that didn't really change too much other than the bullet. And for the bullet, uh, a little bit of a variance. Sometimes you'll see numbers of 265 horsepower or 270 horsepower and 305 pound feet of torque. But we'll get into the bullet later. As for the 1999 Mustang GT, for 1999 and 2000, and some of the mid-2001s, uh, they actually had the engines produced in the Windsor, Ontario plant in Canada. My understanding from a fire that broke out in the Romeo plant in Michigan. So the engines actually came from where Ford built most of their truck engines. So with that said, the horsepower output is still the same. It was rated 260 horsepower with 302 pound-feet of torque. But there was a change, and the uh, engine parts aren't exactly interchangeable, different heads and some things. Uh, so uh, it is technically a different engine. Uh, it has an 8-bolt crank where uh, when they went back to the Romeo plant, all those engines uh, came with the 6-bolt cast crank. And uh, so... Again, horsepower numbers really didn't change, uh, but for 1999 and 2000 and some of the 2001 Mustangs, they actually did get the Windsor version of the uh, engine. And then uh, 2001 and a half uh, and all the way up to 2004 was the Romeo plant. And so that's 260 horsepower, 302 pound-feet of torque, single overhead cam. And so that made it a little bit different for the two valve. And to clarify, even though the early 99, 2000, mid 2001s came with an 8 bolt crank, they were not forged. They were not the Cobra crank, they were just uh, 8 bolt pattern. So, with the two valve engine, now we can start talking about the Bullet Mustang 2001 only. And so, looking at it, the first thing you notice is that aluminum intake manifold, which is different. It was actually the uh, Ford Racing version for the two valve that they put on there. The alternator is different. The water pump's different. So there are differences. It isn't just the same one with 
a few small pieces, but it's significantly different to where you have to be careful if you're switching some parts around. Um, but uh, modular, a lot of the parts do share and, and work with each other, but you could call it a different engine if you wanted to. And so it is rated 265 horsepower sometimes. The bullet people say 270, 275 even, and uh, a little bit more torque, 305 versus the 302 uh, pound-feet of torque. Um, but it gets its torque a little bit sooner. The li the runners are a little bit taller, so um, it may be why they used uh, the F-150 some of their parts like the water pump and some other things but uh anyway it is otherwise the same as the romeo uh, four six liter two valve now we'll get into the four valve here the cobras this is a 2001 cobra for 1999 it looked uh, pretty similar to the engine that you may have heard of in 1999 had some power problems it didn't put out the full advertised 320 horsepower 317 pound feet of torque so uh, they did a correction to that. They ported the intake manifold, we flashed the computer, added a different exhaust for their customers, and then gave them a leather jacket. So I have a video on that. If you want to see it, I'll put it in the video description. Uh, but uh, then they didn't do the Cobra in, in the year 2000 other than the Cobra R to correct these problems. So in 2001, as the one you see here, it came out and it did uh, make the promised horsepower. So it was rated at 320 horsepower and uh, 317 pound-feet of torque. And uh, that kind of underperforming is what led to the Terminator being supercharged, which is a whole other story in itself. Um, but it is a four-valve engine, so you have um, an intake camshaft, an exhaust camshaft on each cylinder head, so a total of four camshafts. Uh, and again, that's what I was saying in the beginning of the movie. Dual overhead cam is referring, in this case, to each cylinder head, so there are a total of four camshafts. Now, the 96 to 98 Cobras were using the Texit aluminum block, which was a very uh, well-engineered, heat-treated block uh, manufactured by the same company that helps uh, do Ferrari's engines, those kind of things. So uh, that block did uh, run out on supply, and they changed over to just what they would call the WAP block, the Windsor Assembly Plant block. It was also aluminum. And so some 2001 Cobras did get it. This one that's in this video here actually did have the Texid block, but later 01 Cobras would then get the WAP aluminum block. So even that was a little bit different, but the same layout, same compression ratio, same horsepower ratings. Now we'll get into the Mach 1 Mustangs for 2003 to 2004. So a lot of people will tell you it's the same as the Terminator engine, just without the blower, which is false, different connecting rods and pistons, same 8-bolt crank uh, the, uh, that's forged for the manual transmission cars, but not the automatics. Automatic Mustang Mach 1s came uh, with the 6-bolt cast one just for easier tooling for it to match up to the automatic transmissions used for the GT and also to prevent the car from doing a full RPM shift into overdrive. So the Mach 1s actually have a lower red line for the automatic cars. The engine could spin just the same RPM, but they did that to kind of protect the... Uh, transmission but that's a little beside the point uh, but anyway so it does have an aluminum block similar to the 99 to 01 cobra um, it would be most similar to uh, the late 01 cobra because it's a windsor assembly plant block uh, but it does have different cylinder heads uh, different compression ratio so uh, the mach 1 was underrated uh, it was said to do that to put some distance between the terminator cobra uh, ratings because they were also underrated but they didn't want to say you could get a Mach 1 with 320 horsepower and then a Terminator with 390 and have people balk at that so the Mach 1 was rated at 305 horsepower and uh, sometimes 310 horsepower with 320 pound-feet of torque now when they went on the dyno they're easily putting down 260s 270s at the wheels so you know that it's a 320 horsepower engine which makes sense because it is very similar to the 01 Cobra layout um, even with a little bit better compression ratio. Uh, so with the Mach 1, um, again, a little bit underrated as it was. It really is a 320 horsepower engine, and 320 pound-feet would be probably pretty accurate for that. 
And now moving on to one of the most favorite Mustang engines of all time, at least in my opinion, the Terminator Cobra engine for 2003 to 2004, where Ford ran out of time basically trying to get it into production and had to turn to manly performance for connecting rods. So it comes stock with a forged 8-bolt crank from Kellogg, forged manly connecting rods, and forged Zollinger pistons. So uh, the compression ratio on this was 8.5 to 1, and very underrated. They said uh, 390 horsepower, 390 pound-feet of torque. People put them on dynos to hit 360, 370, sometimes 380 horsepower on the dyno. So, you know, it was 420-plus horsepower engine uh, for the Terminator. And here's a little information on the connecting rods. Check the video description. I have a lot more uh, on this particular topic. I have a another video showing the rod, the crank, and some other things, so I'll put the link to that in the video description. But I do have a Terminator connecting rod and piston and also a stock 4.6 liter connecting rod and piston. So I wanted to show you these side by side so you can see the massive difference. Here's the traditional 4.6 liter connecting rod and piston. It is not forged. It's a cast piece. And uh, so you can see uh, kind of what this looks like. It has quite a bit of addition here, but it's still a 9.66 compression ratio. The Terminator, they actually dropped down a little more to 8.5 uh, compression ratio. But as you can see, it says SVT and Manly on it, which was uh, something Ford had to do at the time. They were running out of time and couldn't produce a connecting rod strong enough, so they turned to Manly. It also had ARP hardware, which is really nice. But this is a forged connecting rod and a forged piston. piston. The piston is uh, Zollner is the brand and uh, as you can see it, here's the part number on it uh, the 2R3V6110-FA and it has an arrow showing which way the uh, piston needs to face uh, towards the front of the engine and that is the same as where the SVT riding is uh, which is a question I've had before too but uh, anyway you can see uh, the massive difference here with these H-beam rods, forged rods uh, these are really strong you really do not see them ever being um, broken on their own other than cases of extreme detonation or something catastrophic but as far as holding power they will hold power all day long so i really meant for this to be a shorter video it didn't turn out that way take a pause for a rev here But uh, anyway, so let me know your thoughts in the video description. And there are other variants aftermarket. Rouge and Saline supercharged some two valve engines. And they did have a very few Terminators that were supercharged that they just kind of moved some body panels around on. But uh, anyway, you could go deeper and deeper into this. I just wanted to make a quick video and it's already getting pretty long. So check the video description for more. As for the Cobra R in the year 2000, they only made 300 of them. So very low production one. There's not too much out there. These cars are either preserved, some of them raced and collected, but uh, they're not really out there that much. But it was a 5.4 liter, so they did uh, make it slightly larger in displacement, rated at 385 horsepower, 385 pound-feet of torque, just kept it simple, huge intake uh, manifold there, aluminum. Um, so uh, that engine was very neat, but just very limited produced. So feel free to leave a comment on which is your favorite engine and why. There's always the two-valve versus four-valve arguments. So the two-valve can be just as good. I really like the four-valve uh, in the Terminator Cobra and the Mach 1. I think that those engines have a lot of potential. I own all three. I have the uh, Mach 1, I have the GT, and I have the Terminator Cobra. And, of course, by far the Terminator Cobra is a powerhouse. The Mach 1 is a great NA engine to go have fun with without having to worry about much. And the GT engine is very reliable and uh, could use a little bit more power. But uh, if you want to see how to do maintenance on all these, I have videos for doing the entire timing chains on them and I, you know all kinds of Mustang videos. So check the video description. I'll put a playlist for that. So thanks for watching and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks, guys.